Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to build this. This is a picture from the future, so I don't know how it looks, but I hope that it's really beautiful and I hope that it works. But basically this is a gripper for the robot arm. Today I'm going to use it with the Amber B1, but it should be possible to use it with other robotic arms. And I do plan to use it in my future projects. So let's get started. The parts for this project was kindly provided by the company Robotis. This is a company behind the Dynamexel servos. It's quite expensive servo, but there is all the features of the professional actuator like torque measurements, velocity measurements, position measurements, torque control and stuff like this. So it should be ideal for our gripper. There is two nice features about this servo, which is really important for me. First of all, you can control it with RS485 and second, you need 24 volts to run this servo. So this is the same voltage as we are using for the Amber B1 robot. So like this, I don't need any additional power supply for the gripper. This is a USB adapter to communicate with the servo. These are brackets and this is some additional cables. The bare minimum parts for these projects are these ones. Let's look at our servo. Some hardware, cables and the servo itself. The front part is from metal, the middle part is also metal and only the back part is from plastic. There is a connector over here and over here. I suppose there is an LED over here. And for the electronics I am going to use Arduino with Ethernet shield and with RS485 shield. I have already soldered the wire for the servo to it and for the power supply. And what is nice that for this shield you need to provide the voltage from 7 to 24 volts so we can use the 24 volts from the robot arm. Like this again for our Arduino we don't need any additional power supply. And so the idea is that we will communicate with this servo using the Ethernet cable. It's like really tight fit. There is just a small gap between this horn and the front piece. And with this piece you can communicate with the servo through USB. I'm going to use this piece only if I would not be able to communicate with the servo using Arduino. So I really need this only for the debugging. Now I need to install this piece at the back over here. Like this we would be able to fix this piece. For this I need to unmount this plastic cover. This is how it looks inside. And over here we can install the bearing. This small piece goes here. And now we need to reassemble it like it was before. And over here at the back we're going to mount this bracket. Nice! Now I will test this servo with the Arduino and only afterwards I will install this bracket. I think for the test it's always safe when there is nothing installed on the output. Over here everything is simple. The RS485 is connected over here to the A and B. This is the power and the ground is connected to the ground. On this shield I made a small modification over here and with this modification I don't need to change anything in the Dynamaxel to Arduino library. So basically I did some hardware modification in order not to do the software modification. Let's connect RS485 shield to the Arduino and to the Ethernet shield. I have already wrote the code for the Arduino for this project. I hope that it's going to work but I never tested it. Apparently it's quite easy to use Dynamaxel server like this one with Arduino. And for this I'm going to use this library which I already mentioned Dynamaxel to Arduino. And there are many examples in this library so it's very straightforward to follow it and to use this kind of server. Let's check if it's really easy. So for this we're going to connect the power and see if my code is working. And right now is going to be the first time when I'm going to try this code with the server. I already tested it without server, but not with the server, so I'm not sure that it's going to work. Let's find out. This is the Ethernet connection to the Raspberry Pi and the USB cable is going to provide only the power to the Arduino and to the shields. Let's switch on the power for this server. I hope nothing is going to broke because this is a single server which I have. The single one. If it's dead, I'm screwed. The power for the servo. On. No explosion. Nothing. Cool. Now let's provide the power to the Arduino and if everything is okay, this LED over here should blink once. And it's not. Not cool. Not cool. I need to find out the error in my code. I have found at least one mistake. RS485 from server should be connected not to the A and B but to the Y and Z. 
Let's see if it's going to help. So power for the servo and power for Arduino. You saw LED was blinking. Cool, probably it works. Let's try to enable the servo. Ah, you see, you see, you see, it's, it's glowing. To disable servo. Now let's try to put this servo in the position mode and let's try to move it. Now let's put the position zero. Oh, you saw. Let's put the position back 180. Cool, it seems like it works. Position zero, position 180. For this mechanical assembly, I 3D printed these parts. This is the box which will contain all the electronics, meaning this one. This is the cover for this box. And this cover is going to be fixed at the end of the robot arm. And this is the jaw for the gripper. And I have 3D printed it in yellow and in blue. I have not yet decided which one I want to put, the yellow one or the blue one. So basically it will be the box, the servo, one jaw like this and another one like this. Or maybe this color. This looks not bad. Or maybe this one. I think I would prefer either the blue one or like this. And afterwards I will install this gripper on this robot arm. So you remember this is the Amber B1 robot arm. I have also 3D printed this piece where the arm can rest. And by the way this is the sixth iteration after five unsuccessful iterations. This is just to show you that there are a lot of works behind the camera before making these kind of videos. Aha! And now this robot arm has the place to rest. Perfect fit. Now let's continue with the gripper. Here there is a place for embedded nuts. For other embedded nuts goes here. So the cable goes through this hole and we can fix the servo. This jaw fixes here on the side with the four screws here and two screws down there. The second jaw will be fixed on the bracket over here. And now I need to install all the electronics here and to wire it up. I have soldered all the wires and now we're going to install it over here but before we need to connect this connector which is going to be complicated because it's too short. Now we need to connect it over there in a really tight spot. I hope that it's going to be doable. I've managed. Seems nice. Perfect. Look. And now this cover goes here. And this one will go like this, but before installing this one, we need to put it first of all on the robot arm. For this, I'm going to dismount this part. Like this, we're going to gain this width. Over here, I have dismounted one screw and I'm going to replace it with the longer one with this spacer. Like this, so it's going to stick a little bit. And this screw is going to move inside this groove. And like this, it's going to limit the motion of the gripper. And so we are not going to break the cables. And now we can fix these two parts together. And now this cable goes to the last joint. And like this, basically the wiring is done. And so the cable is just long as it should be. Now we need to install this bracket over here and this part of the jaw here. Boom. I will make this thread in this hole, this one, this one and this one. Like this we can bolt them together. Very conveniently these holes, they have already right diameter for the M3 thread. Now when I have a thread, we can continue. And now this will go over here. In order to improve the grip, I will use these anti-slide parts. And two of them I'm going to put over here on the fixed jaw and two other I'm going to put on this moving jaw. And the last part of assembly. For the first test, let's try the gripper alone without robot arm, but using the library of the robot arm. And I'm going to use the current based position mode for the servo. It should be perfect for the gripper for this application. So let's try it. The robot arm is powered. Now I can put the servo in this current based position mode. Let's put some small current. Right now the position is 90 degrees. Let's put uh, 120, no, 180. <laughs> yeah, the current which I put was too small. 
So let's increase the current a little bit and let's move back. Yeah, the current is too small. So I'm going to completely close it, but because the current is small, the torque should be small, so it should not, so theoretically it should not break this box. Ha! Open. And if I put the current 80, so a little bit more, and let's close. The gripper works. And now it's time to test everything, so the robot arm with the gripper. And so today we have built this gripper. I really like it and I really like the integration of this gripper to this robot arm because we used the Ethernet line, the same line is used by the other joints of the servo. And so basically we put this gripper on the robot arm without any additional cables. And even more we can use the same commands to control this gripper which we use to control other joints. I think this is a really cool feature and I'm very happy with this build. And all this was possible thanks to the Dynamaxel servo. So huge thank you to the robotics company who sent me this servo. This servo is very expensive, but at the same time you have a really good features with this servo, like torque control and torque based position control. And these control modes are very useful for the gripper because like this we can grip the light and fragile object with the smaller force and for the heavy object we can use the higher forces. So this should be perfect. And also on the website of the robotics you can find all the files for this servo, including the step files, the step files for the brackets and all the instructions. And this really helps to accelerate the design process. In one of my next video, I'm going to test this gripper to see which kind of object it can handle and with which kind of object it has problems. But I tried to design it in the way that it should be able to handle a lot of different types of objects. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to put the like to this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And huge thank you to the people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. This help is crucial for the survival of this YouTube channel. Thank you again. Stay safe. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.